today on an all-new Dr. Phil. She claims her daughter's dangerous. You say she killed a cat, started fires. And only 11. She tried smothering her brother. I don't have any more anger after I harm somebody. Is her young son safe? She was bending his feet so his toes touched his shins. Where were you when this was going on? This is about my daughter, not about me. You seem to think you don't have anything to do with this. It's your child. Today we're talking about 11-year-old girl, Marie, appears like a sweet young girl as she shows off her room and her ribbons on her YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a tour of my room. <laughs> That's a bow container. I love bows. Yeah, I used to play baseball, Barbie, shoes. Today I'm going to be playing with my stuffies. <laughs> But Mother Tina claims that things are not as they seem. She claims that cute little girl is actually a dangerous killer. My daughter looks sweet and loving, but she is homicidal. Her daughter smashed a little girl's head against the wall for cutting in line. When my son was just four months old, my daughter tried to smother him with his blanket by putting her hand over his mouth and his nose. She said she was trying to play peekaboo with him, but he was sleeping. We have a family member that has a baby that is on oxygen. And Tina's daughter has on several occasions pinched off the cords to the oxygen. I also have come to find out that she was dumping out this baby's medication. Tina's daughter would take this medication and open it and she would dump it out and refill it with water. I was shocked when I found out that she admitted to be calculated enough at 10 years old at the time to be able to pull something like that off. Tina's daughter actually used the oxygen to kill a stray cat. She took the cat and put it inside in a scratching post, put the oxygen in there, over oxygenating the cat. When she's angry with my son, she will slap him, pinch him, twist his legs, twist his arms, bend his feet back. Now my son has to see a therapist because of the damage that was done to his ankles and his feet. Tina's daughter was kicked out of her elementary school because she threatened students that she was going to have her parents come to the school with a gun and blow the school up and shoot them all. Tina's daughter needs help before she kills herself or kills someone else. She's truly a sick, sick child. One month ago, Tina and her cousin Colleen recorded a troubling interview of the girl who we are calling Marie to protect her identity. Listen as the 11 year old explains to Colleen why she likes abusing her little baby brother. It's me to feel funker around with little kids because I feel like I'm gonna hurt them. And what if animals? I hit them because it's a better benefit than hitting children, but since there is no animals, it's harder for me to take my anger off on them. So you've just been doing what then? Harm to my brother. I slap him, I pinch him, I bend his arms, and I get his feet, and I put it to where it's like he's touching the very bottom of his shin. When you hurt or the animals, do you think about this is what I'm going to do, or you just instinctively do it? Or? I just actually do it. I don't really think about it. I do feel... You feel relieved? I feel relieved, but bad. It's like I don't have any more anger in me after like, I harm somebody. Well, after hearing Marie's explanation, Tina and Colleen say they took Marie to the hospital because they were petrified she was going to kill her baby brother. But that started a whole new set of problems. Tina and I took her daughter to the hospital to become evaluated. When we got to the hospital, my daughter admitted to the doctors that she tried smothering her brother. So they 51 50 her. She was placed on Sunday and they called me Thursday to be picked up. After the hospital called me, I decided to go to the police. And they told me to leave her in the hospital because if she came home and she hurt my son again, then I would be responsible and both of my children would be taken from me. Because I didn't pick my daughter up from the hospital, I have allegations against me stating abandonment as well as failure to protect my child. Okay, uh, we obviously have a very serious situation 
right now, correct? Correct. And where is the child at this point? Right now she is in a foster placement. She was harming her younger brother, who is how old now? He just turned one. He just turned one? Yes, sir. And how did you become aware that she was harming him? In the middle of the night, he would wake up and he would just scream. And we had thought that he was having night terrors. I had contacted Colleen and she said, he's got to be teething or something must be bothering him. He's too young for night terrors. Uh -huh. And here to find out, she admitted openly that she had done harm to him while he was sleeping. So were you getting up and going and checking on him? He was in the, we were all in the same room. Okay. But the problem was I was sleeping until he woke up screaming. So she would get up in the night yes. and go and harm him. Correct. And then jump back in bed? Correct. And you never caught her doing it? No. Um, did you ever have experience of her doing this to her little brother? N no, only what she told me. Okay, and what did she tell you? She told me that she was slapping him, pinching him, taking his feet and bending them till his toes touched his shins. And she would take his arm and put it behind his back and use her arm, her hand, to push his shoulder back till he would scream. And where were you when this was going on? Either I was sleeping in the same room or it was when I would go into the kitchen to make a bottle or I was doing something else with my back toward her. Okay. And you're saying the baby does now have night terrors Correct. because of this? And she, Colleen has witnessed it. Uh -huh. Well, according to Colleen and, and Tina and Marie, here's what's gone on. The child has threatened to kill Tina, the brother, Piers, and herself. Correct. She's attempted to drown another child, correct? Correct. Uh, pushed a peer against a brick wall, mm -hmm. banging their head. Correct. Uh, that was in my care. Yes. That was in your care? Yes. Uh, pinched the oxygen of the special needs baby? Correct. Yes. Okay. And started fires? Yes. Uh, killed a cat, harmed a dog, defecated outside the toilet, mm -hmm. stole money, gave away wedding rings, destroyed property, watched pornography. Correct. Um, do you talk to her about these things? Absolutely. What, what does Every she day. say when you talk to her about these things? When we ask her about it, she just, sometimes she just pushes it away and just puts it in the back of her mind or she just shuts down. Uh, killing a cat is a significant event for a child. I mean, what, what does she say? Wh wh when did this happen? That's when she was in Colleen's care. She was with you. And you have custody of the child right now, correct? Right. I didn't think I did, but apparently, legally, I do, which I was just made aware of. How, how do you not know if you have custody of a child? Because we, I gave Marie back to her mother, and at that time, my returning the child to the mother, I was under the belief that I did what I was supposed to do to make sure mom had home, housing, what, Did you do the paperwork? Yes. Well, we did a, the power of attorney. So you still have custody? Apparently. So the power of attorney well, was apparently not, you do or you don't. I guess I do. Yes, sir. Okay. And you've given up custody of the child voluntarily before. This was my second time, yes. From zero to two, um, the, the child was raised by you and grandmother. Correct. All right. From two to four, the child was raised by the two of you. Correct. From four to six, the child was raised by grandmother and step-grandfather. Correct. Because I was trying to pursue a life in the military. Okay. And you don't, military people don't have children? No, they do. But the problem is, is I was going through a difficult time of being away from her through separation anxiety and so forth. So I wasn't able to fulfill my BMT and so forth. Difficult time because of separation anxiety? Correct. But that's when you want to stay together, not apart, right? Yes. Well, wouldn't you do the opposite? Wouldn't you when we're stay? Separate, when we're separate, it's a more difficult situation to where I get anxiety, she was getting anxiety, and so forth. Well, so wouldn't you want to keep her with you? I would love to have my daughter back with me, but right but now... But you gave her... I did, so that, that was the only way that I was able to pursue BMT and military life to do the training and so forth because I was a single parent. Okay. Then from six to nine, you and her biological father mm -hmm. had her, but you were homeless? 
she was mainly with me. And during that time you were homeless? I was basically homeless. I didn't have a stability home, but it was basically we were staying with a friend. Then nine to 10 years old with you. Correct. That's when I took the kinship foster. Right. And then 11 years old now, from July to December, she's been back with you. Correct. Homeless. Correct. But we were in a homeless shelter. And now since January, she's with social services. Yes. Since December 6th. December 6th. Pardon me. So uh, this child, has she ever had a stretch of stability in a yes. home? Yes. Yes. Multiple times. With the grandmother and the step-grandfather, and then in my home for the almost two years. All right, well, when we come back, uh, Marie posted a song on her YouTube channel about her life that I found really telling. Was it a message to her mother? I, I don't know. We'll talk about that next. Marie has been telling her doctors that you've been physically abusing her. That's news to me. I never physically abused my child. You can't be in denial and hope to turn things around with this child. And later, she's looking for someone else to parent this child. Let it out. Let's deal with it. That's why this, this is, is going about on. my daughter. This not is about, about me. her. You seem to think you don't have anything to do with this. What do you mean? It's your child. I believe Tina's daughter is a sociopath. When you speak to her, she's like an actress, very emotional and happy or sad. My room is actually really cool. Right now I'm at my desk. But when you look at her, there's nothing behind her eyes. She's hollow. Tina's daughter is going to be a cold, calculating child killer if she does not get help. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Colleen and Tina say they're scared that Tina's 11-year-old daughter, Marie, will one day go on a killing spree. Yes. Uh, Tina says she doesn't know where her daughter's extreme behavior stems from, but Colleen says she has a pretty good idea. Take a look. Tina's daughter's issues stem from a lack of parenting. Tina and her daughter started living with me when her daughter was an infant. Tina was supposed to take care of my children in exchange for room and board. But Tina was allowing my daughter to engage in drinking and smoking. After Tina moved out of my home and cleaning her space, I found multiple vodka bottles underneath her bed. After Tina left my house, she moved home to home with her daughter, not having a job. I received multiple job offers and I could not accept them due to the fact that I had no one that would take on my daughter. Tina says that she cannot get a job or find stable housing because of her daughter's behavior, but I believe that's an excuse. There was a time for three years when Tina's mother was caring for Tina's daughter. Tina still couldn't get a house and a job. It's time for Tina to take responsibility, grow up, and become a mother. You think, and others in the family think, there's been some real questionable parenting going on here on her part, correct? And I have, I, I absolutely 100% agree with that, but I will say that this mom has really stepped up in the last year and a half. And I have seen her do this remarkable turnaround to where she has become the parent today that she was not yesterday. Okay, turn around from what? From homelessness and not being able to work, not being able to have a stable environment. If everything is fine, and, you, and you've it's, got this turned around, aren't you still homeless? Yes, right now. Are you still unemployed? Yes. So because where's of this all miraculous the... turnaround? I'm not, I'm not trying to disparage anything here. I'm just trying to find out. I don't, you, you can't be in denial and hope to turn things around with this child. According to family, um, and you tell me if some of this is true or not, that in the past she's covered the baby's head with a blanket when the baby was crying. I never seen that. Okay, well, we've got and it those. it never happened. I mean, I, I'm not saying it happened. I'm no, saying I it's in medical documents. Right. And he's right. They are. They're there. Okay, I told this you. This is that. the first Wait. that I've heard this. Um, and that there's, there's been no bonding, no taking the baby out, no togetherness between you and the baby. And so there's been an attachment problem. That's news to me. Well, that's what reactive attachment disorder is. Okay. That's with the diagnosis. Okay. Well, is that true or. My daughter and I, yes, she has issues 
but I love her consistently, just as much as I love my son. Well, I'm not <laughs> saying you don't. I'm trying to get an idea of what this child's experience has been. Everywhere I went, my daughter went with me when she was younger. No job, unstable housing. Uh, and I did have a job. Homeless periods. The allegation was made that you shopped a child around at various doctors for prescriptions and that you've punched, kicked, hit, and pulled her hair. That's false also. Marie has made those allegations against her. Right. But that never happened. I never physically abused my child. Why would she say those things? She was, right now she's angry with me. And here's what she said to the doctors. In May of 16, she said, quote, mom's abusing me and friends making fun of me. My mom abandoned me. Uh, main goals, quote, fix my heart, focus on learning and following directions. This is the first that I'm hearing about these. Well, how am I reading those records and you're not? I don't know. Nobody's ever given me access to the records. Well, how did I get them and you don't? You're the, her mother. Because she got the custody and she's the one that received all the paperwork. Well, how did I get those and she didn't? Have you not shown her those records? No, sir. I... Have you, never make been her asked her for you didn't yes, make her aware that knows. her daughter is telling Absolutely. these things? Absolutely. Not these things. I, I told her that Marie has been telling her doctors that you've been physically abusing her. Telling yeah, you told me that part. That's what he just said. I, I fully believe the child's capable of lying, don't get me wrong. Right. I mean, <laughs> she's done a lot of other things right. too. But you have to understand, I, I, I'm trained as a forensic psychologist. Right. So I am have investigated these kinds of situations for fitness of a parent and, and custody recommendations. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out who's got their eyes wide open here and knows what's going on. Um, okay, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Tina was arrested and in jail for a month and forced to give up custody of Marie. Why? What happened? There's, there's this turnaround going on. How does this fit in? We'll be right back. An 11 year old would write something like that. Because she's got a lot of hurt. She's hurt. She's sad. She's screaming out for help. She's had a pretty rough ride. I failed her. I feel like Tina acts entitled, that she believes that she deserves everything that I give my children and that she's an equal to them. I do treat her like my daughter. I love her like my daughter, but Tina is not my responsibility. Tina's a grown woman. Colleen says Tina has relied on her to that help parent bad. her troubled 11 year old daughter who we are calling Marie to protect her identity. Now Colleen and Tina claim Marie has uh, attacked a classmate, killed a cat, threatens to kill her baby brother. Now, what were y'all saying at the break here? There was allegations against me that were falsified. Yes. Right. That's during the imprisonment. And I've, I fought those charges and they were all expunged because it was all false. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, well, well, yeah. I'm glad they got dismissed. Yeah. But so you were I, in jail for a month? I was in jail. I lost a month of my life and I lost my daughter because of this. Okay. And I said it to break. I, I don't want to say it to you right. off air and not say it on air. I'm right. fully aware that a child of this, uh, of this adjustment can certainly lie. Correct. I, I mean, obviously, she's acting out in many ways. And right. what I'm concerned about is that you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And you two seem to have a very different reality about what's gone on here. I would agree with that. And they called and said, this child was on 5150. Right. She's now released. Come pick her up. Correct. And you said, uh, no. Right. I'm not going to come pick her up because you felt like you were in a catch-22, right? Correct. Because if you come pick her up, then you're bringing her back home where the one-year-old is. Correct. So now you're failing to protect the one-year-old because you're bringing a known threat to the one-year-old into the house. Correct. So now you're failing to protect the one-year-old. Correct. But if you don't pick up the 11-year-old, then you're abandoning the 11-year-old. Correct. So you're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Correct. And we went and spoke to a police officer. Yeah, they're really good at working these things out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Marie wrote a song. Mm. Uh, the lyrics are, I'm only dying, but I understand how I will never change. I just need to be who I am. Just give me a chance and you will get to know me better. 
I think you will see better in me. I'll be there to help you. Just need to help me back. I can change like that. That's slapping your fingers. I'll be there to help you. You just need to help me back. Just be nice to me and then you'll get stuff back from me. Don't ever be mean to me. Yeah. Why do you think an 11 year old would write something like that? Um, because she's got a lot of hurt. Mm -hmm. Who do you think she's writing that to? Now seeing it, it seems like it's more geared to me. I came in when she was recording that and, and then I opened the door and I said, oh boy, are you making music? And she said, yes, mamas, I'm writing a song for my mommy. And I think it breaks my heart. She's hurt. She's sad. She's screaming out for help. Has this child been hurt somewhere along the way? Yes. Multiple times. Who hurt her? I failed her so far as her mom. She's had a pretty rough ride. Yes. Horrific. When we come back, uh, you know, the question is, what do they do now? I mean, is Tina ready? And the question is going to be, if she's not fit to take care of the 11-year-old, why would CPS determine that she's fit to take care of her one-year-old? I mean, there's a lot at stake here for both of these women and the children involved. It's time to get to the bottom of that. We'll be right back. I love you. I love you. I want you to do what you have to do. Then why bring We're it up? We're now, because we have to bring it up, honey. You let it out. Let's deal with it. Closed captioning provided by... Tina is my cousin and she's dependent on me like I am her mother. Tina calls me multiple times an hour. Tina will call me to tell me she's arrived at the grocery store. She's at the checkout. She just started the car. She's turning left at the light. If Tina has questions about her children, she calls me first. They have a fever or they're crying. I don't feel that Tina would be able to wipe her ass without me. I've told you that. I've said it to you many times. It's incorrect. I love you. I love you. I want you to do what you have to do. Then why bring We're it up? We're now, because we have to bring it up, honey. If we no, don't, we don't face it and bring it up right now, we I can't get help. Do you know why I see this shirt? It's all a zipper. You've got it all up to here. Unzip the damn thing and let it out. Let's deal with it. I've already dealt and with everything. And we are. Everything. That's why. That's why this, this is, is going on. This is about my daughter, This not is about me. her, but you have to this understand. This is about my daughter, it not is. about me. But where you You're had more her being derogatory you, toward me. I'm not. Her. This is about my child, not about me. But it, well, it, if I may interrupt. <laughs> Joining us is Dr. Charles Sophie. Uh, he is on the Dr. Phil Advisory Board uh, and is a board certified in three clinical specialties: adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and family practice as well as being the medical director for the Department of Child and Family Services here in Los Angeles, which is the largest agency of its kind in the entire United States. He runs the big one. Um, Dr. Sophie, yes, Tina's saying this is about her daughter, not about her. This is all about her, is it not? Absolutely. Parenting begins with you. Right. But this is about trying to find other resources for my daughter that I haven't already exercised. But if you're not stable, you can't parent yet. Let me ask you a, a few questions here. Like, you're not working right now, right? No, but I am seeking employment. You say you're not working because you've been thrown out of the shelter, that you've Correct. lost two job opportunities that you could have right. gone to work, that you're not able to sustain a job, not able to sustain housing because of medical appointments. Mm -hmm. For her. That you're not sleeping because of the son's night terrors. Correct. She can't leave the daughter out of your sight 
because of the problems. Correct. Uh, that you have diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, shoulder and back issues, hip dysplasia, mm -hmm. that you've had a heart attack. Yes. From the stress of parenting this child. It's just all stress. Okay. Not just from her. And you say you don't believe any of that. If she had these, how can she help me? Because she can take care of business. I mean, she's Because I push tough. through the pain and do what I have to do. And she does do. have tough pain in her shoulder, but I don't know. I don't believe she needs a double deep knee replacement. I don't believe you need a double shoulder replacement and a double hip replacement. I just don't. You, you had questions you wanted us to ask her. You wanted me to yes, ask her. I do. What did you do to find a job for the four years your mother had your daughter? My, daughter, my mother didn't have my daughter for four years. Well, for however long. I was constantly working. I had part-time jobs, yes. What did you do to find a job when she had your daughter for all these years? She's only had my daughter for a year and a half, technically. Okay, for a year and, and a half. And I was continuously working. And then I became pregnant and I wasn't able to work. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you're saying that you're looking for resources, of course, but Dr. Sophie, doesn't this start with the mother? Yes. I mean, it sounds like it's somebody else has been raising this child and that she's looking for someone else to parent this child. I mean, yeah. doesn't, I mean. It's inconvenient for her. Doesn't this have to start with her? Isn't that the number one resource? Absolutely. But you have to start to admit that you deny, you deflect, you minimize, but you've got to own all that's happened. I do own everything that's happened with my daughter. All right, she says she's in a catch-22 here. I'm going to ask Dr. Sophie when we come back, what should she do? We'll find out after the break. Closed captioning provided by... Tina has all sorts of medical excuses of why she is unable to work. I had a heart attack, type 2 diabetes, joint arthritis, dysplasia, problems with my shoulder and my back. I've never seen an insulin needle. I've never seen an insulin tablet. I've never seen pills. I'm no medical doctor and I can't diagnose Tina, but I think I know enough that I don't believe any of these are true. It's my you opinion. It I've never seen not. it. Colleen believes Tina is just trying to manipulate the welfare system and get Marie back in her life so she can collect another check. Colleen is very concerned about Tina's one-year-old son. We had a nanny watch over Tina's baby while we interviewed Tina. The nanny has her master's degree in early child development and has been working with children for 10 years. She says she too is worried because in the 11 hours she was with the baby, Tina fed him two eight-ounce bottles of milk and a bite of one strawberry. She felt like that wasn't enough. When he's hungry, he lets me know. Okay. You said this is turning into something that's not supposed to Correct. be because you feel like you're getting your inventory taken as a parent when you think that's not what the focus should be. You th think the focus should be what? We're here for my, to try to find other resources for my child. This isn't supposed to be about me, and it's gotten switched into something that it's not. That's how I feel. Well, the, the number one resource for your child is, is you. I understand that. So if what you want is a list of social services that are available, you can go down to the courthouse and get that. But if you're talking to me, I'm about unifying families, and unifying right. families is about building up the resources within the family. Correct. And that starts with mother, father, extended family. That starts with mother, father, extended family. And i am not accused you of doing a single thing. I said children lie. I, I get right. that. Um, but it's astounding to me that you're saying you seem to think you don't have anything to do with this. No, I have a it's lot It's not about me, it. it's about my child. What, what do you mean? It's your child. Okay. Should she have picked this child up from the hospital? Yes. And then you have resources. You could have called CPS. I have contacted no, the police With the department. child. You could have even gone to an office and said, look, I don't know what to do. I don't want another nightmare. I don't want to lose my baby. There are places to go and things to do. But and abandoning her is only going to get you in deeper water. I understand that, but I didn't abandon her. I went and spoke with a police but officer. But I'm just saying, see, this is what I mean. Like, you did abandon her. 
I told that team they are doing an injustice with her, that she's very ill, that I believe that she needed a higher level of care, that I believe that, you know, she needed more help. And when she, then what happens? A couple days later, she does this. They were really oblivious to her behaviors, even in the medical record. They're not. No, but they were. No, but she, you know. do the same thing she does. And the two of you are where these kids are caught, honestly. Right. Come on, be fair to these kids. No, I had my job. I had my home and everything else, and I the point gave is, it all up bigger I'm picture, here the to make excuses better and the, for my the child. lack of ownership is what I'm talking about on both No, I parts. took ownership of messing now, up things. But all these years you haven't. No, I have. In the past but three years, But why does she want to kill people? I don't know. She's angry. Right. And well, she why is she angry? I don't know why she's angry. Maybe Probably you'll... because Look of Look at me. the list. Come on. See, if this denial is what's not going to allow the system to give you that kid back. Okay, but the thing is, I honestly, truly don't know why she's so angry. Look at the list. I've tried. But I'm not saying you didn't try, but that was her life. Right. The child has been bounced around. She has gone from one adult to another adult to another adult to another adult. You have farmed her out, assigned her somewhere, given custody here, given custody there, and a child figures out how that's their fault. Colleen says she's planning on buying a house and having Tina move in with her. Is that a good idea? No. I don't know. We'll talk about all this when we come back. Well, Colleen says she's not only worried about Tina's 11-year-old daughter, who she fears will one day kill someone, she is also very concerned about Tina's one-year-old son. And, you know, this is... This is what has led y'all to not know what to do with the 11 year old and a one year old, right? Yeah. Okay, now, look, uh, tell, me, tell me where we are here. Um, are, are, you, are you hearing what's said or are you feeling picked on? No, I'm hearing what's said and a lot of things need to change. And I need to take ownership of everything that's gone wrong in my child's life. Well, let me put up 10 factors that I want you to look at. And the bottom line is I did this story for one reason. And it's, it's for the child. Yeah. Absolutely. How you two get along. Sorry, it doesn't That's make my business. top thousand. Right. I mean, really, it does because you're adults. You could work this out on your own. You right. don't need me for that. You, you, right. You're, I know. you're adults. You're mature enough to do I that on your own. I, mm. I'd like to do the stories to help people that don't have a voice. Mm. And she wrote a song, which is trying to get a voice, but. My God, I, I'm having a hard enough time being hurt. I can imagine what she right. feels. Right. Um, but, you know, it varies from state to state. But Dr. Sophie and I have been over this over, over the last couple of years, and this pretty much would cover every state. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, I agree. Uh, number one, you have to provide a safe, stable, and secure environment if you're, if you're going to have a custody of a child. Mm -hmm. Number two, loving, stable, consistent, nurturing relationship. You got an attachment disorder here. Mm -hmm. You're not bonded with this child. So this isn't happening, this isn't happening. Daily needs of the child's feeding, clothing, and physical care. You feed the child when they're hungry? No, no. You feed the child to meet their nutritional needs. When they, have, uh, they make enough noise to tell you and get your attention and be a squeaky wheel, th that's not what the American Academy of Pediatrics suggests. You, you have to attend to the adequate education for the child. You have to provide for financial support, get a job, ability to identify and prioritize their needs ahead of your own. Empathize and meet the child's needs. Regulate impulses and emotions. Develop and maintain appropriate relationships, appropriate judgment regarding their welfare. These are all big things. And if you don't check those off, not only are you not going to be able to mother the 11 year old, you're not going to be able to mother the one year old because there is another element to child abuse. 
that has to do with neglect. And neglect is failing to protect a child in his or her care from inflicted physical, mental, or sexual injury caused by the acts of another. If you fail to keep your children from harm's way, that's child abuse. Right. You don't even have to lay a hand on them. Just failing to keep them out of harm's way is abuse. Okay. These children deserve to be in a home that meets those 10 criteria. And until you can provide those 10 criteria, they need to be somewhere that they can have those 10 criteria. So where is Tina on all of this? How does she grade her own paper on these 10 things? I'll ask her after the break. Closed captioning provided by... Well, I'm back with Colleen and Tina. We're talking about an 11 year old child here that has been acting out and showing a lot of aberrant behavior, aggressive behavior, violent behavior against self and others, uh, enough to cause both of these caregivers uh, concern uh, that she could hurt herself or someone else. Uh, Dr. Charles Sophie is here. He's a board certified uh, psychiatrist that works with children and adults. And uh, Dr. Sophie, uh, I'm going to ask you how you would grade that paper, but how would you grade your paper on those 10 items? Not very good. That just becomes a to-do list, right? It, it doesn't mean the world comes to an end. It just means that becomes Correct. a to-do list. Correct. And there are resources to help her achieve every single one of those things on that list, correct? She doesn't just go home and say, okay, blank piece of paper, where do I start? Nope. There are resources to help her achieve everything on that list, correct? correct? Absolutely. So at this point, the child is in foster care, correct? Correct. And will not be returned from foster care until you demonstrate these 10 elements. The question is, you're now on the radar with a one-year-old and have to demonstrate those 10 elements. Correct. And they will look at the one-year-old now, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so that means that list needs to get real busy real fast. Mm -hmm. I've and been working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Showing, just just doing the effort. Yes. Speaks a lot. Yeah. Um, the I'm behavior trying speaks. my best. Yeah. Doing what I can, mm -hmm. what I have. Yeah. If you hit a wall, go to them. I, I have. Okay. Go to them all the time. I do. Good. I ask them when I have questions. I ask them what do I have to do. They told me that I have to go through another set of parenting classes again. And I said, I'm ready. Yep. Let's go and do it. So that's at the end of this month I have those classes. Yep. I, well, no, no one's blaming you. But the fact is you were a child raising children, I think. Right. And you were learning a lot of these things right. after the fact. Correct. You weren't ready. And you need a lawyer. Yes. You, you don't need, like... Perry Mason for your rest right. of the year, but you need a lawyer to affect some of these things so you don't get in a situation that calls into jeopardy your judgment for these other children. You need to cross the T's and dot the I's right away. And it yeah, won't it won't be long and it, it won't be expensive, but you need to get but you do need someone to navigate that for you yeah. quickly. Okay? Absolutely. All right. All right, uh, Dr. Sophie, yes, sir. thank you. Thank I appreciate you. your Absolutely. clarity on this. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Sophie and uh, my guest today. And if you need some guidance through this, some private help in navigating this system and in getting your feet under you, then I'm going to provide that help for you, you, whether it be therapeutically or a life coach to really help you connect these dots and close the gap on those 10 things as quickly as possible, I'm gonna get you somebody to walk that walk with you so it's not as hard as it might seem when you're alone. Thank you. Okay, all right, we'll do that. All right, for more information about today's show, log on to drphil.com. If you have a similar story to today's show, let me know. Go to drphil.com, we'll see you next time. Thank you.